Yep. I hear you. How okay. are you breathing? <laughs> breathing and ready for another yep. day of what I call the Vicious News Network. Yes. That's what we should change it to, the Vicious News Network. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back and a little bit of dark humor here. Uh, Tim, you know, remember the uh, the tagline for the Star Trek, uh, going where no man has gone before. Uh, I almost want to say that when we open up the, the can of worms, whether you look at Drudge News Network or your blog, which is europebusiness.blogspot.com, I almost like would like to use a little tagline saying, this is the Vicious News Network, because there's very few redeeming things in the news. Uh, it's always almost always bad. It's almost always so shockingly catastrophic that even if you're a student or a, you know, really inquiring to find out what the really tr- the truth is, because there's also disinformation out there, but when you actually discern and find out that it isn't made up, that it actually is probably worse than you actually thought before, and it's so over the top, it just puts you in a new state of shock each day when you think, well, that can't happen, and it does. Yeah, uh, it's, it's actually quite depressing uh, to deal with. Well, the only and, thing that won't be the end uh, of the universal I, I put, is the only universal end of is Jesus, God. Because if you look at this rationally, without Jesus, the next logical thing to do would be suicide. I'm honest, being honest with people about that, okay? Because if you're really honest and you don't say, well, this is just exaggerating, this can't be happening. God's going to intervene. God's watching, and he's not nervous. He's on the throne. But without God's intervention, we are so toast, it's unreal. There's so many converging disasters happening, and I'm a positive person. That's why I do this show, because I care about my fellow man, fellow Americans, fellow human beings on the planet. And I know that we as servants are this, they call salt and light. Do you remember how Jesus said, you know, you're salt and light to the earth? We are salt and light. And without the salt and light, literally, as it loses its savor, the world, judgment's coming. And you can see every aspect of it. We don't want to set dates, but we can tell people, if you're on a checklist, as I said earlier in the program today, of 500 items and you're up to 497 and the other three look like they're forming, we're in trouble. And, uh, you know, it's time to get down on your face and your hands and knees and pray to the Most High God in sackcloth and ashes and say, oh my gosh, God, please intervene, just like in Daniel in the lion's den. We're in a lion's den right now. And the lions are, you know, walking around salivating, and the saliva is dripping in the bottom of the cage. They're and we're there. We smell like lunch. We smell like we smell like like a <laughs> submarine to them lions. The lions say, oh, "Man, it's, it's, it's going to taste good. It's going to taste good." <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Christ is the answer, and uh, thank goodness that uh, well, God is the way He is because. Right. Well. We, we had the movie last night. We went out, my wife and I, Michelle, to the movie God's Not Dead. And what an awesome, mind-blowing movie. And the one I saw a few weeks ago, which is Heaven's Real. And there's two more Christian movies coming out. And, and by the way, these movies do make money. Christians want to hear it. They're starving for something that's not just smash bang, too much special effects, driving your brain crazy, and crazy philosophies like the movie And, and you mean no Cardassians? Right, and and no, and Noah, which is basically said, no, ah, oh my God, the movie Noah was the most blasphemous, ugly, horrifying, yeah, and evil yeah, non-Christian I, I movie. I, that that movie is it literally that it's, the, the people that wrote that movie literally literally came out of the bowels of Hades to bring that movie to the population. It's an yep. assault on on common decency, is what it is. Well, you and I, and I'm sure many others on, on your side, we, we talk about the spiritual aspect of what's going on. Because well, if like you don't go there, you'll never understand without it. Without God, we're lost. Well, not and without well, you, you, knowing that God is there to take care of us, it, well, not only that, it, Tim, you can't because handle it. You, because you have the military background and you work with these as a consultant, because you have the historical background and you're a professor, because you're a believer, your mind is clear. If you didn't have a clear mind, you couldn't see through this stuff. You wouldn't understand it. You'd reach to a certain point like a bug hitting a window. And, it would, and the bug doesn't understand. The window is closed and it's hitting the glass. Even though it can see out, it's looking well, through glass. Uh, the way I describe it, uh, uh, it during the, the, uh, the uh, Star Trek, the, t- the original TV show, which tells you how old I am, but the original TV show, uh, Spock, he, he would play this game called Space Chess. And I had a game. Uh, you could buy them, and I got one for Christmas one time. But it was on three or four levels, and those at the bottom level didn't know what the higher level was doing. And that's pretty much what, what's going on right now. If you right. don't look to the highest level, which is the spiritual level, you end up saying, 
why? This is stupid. This can't be right. Why would someone deliberately move us towards the Third World War? Why would our administration, when we're in a Great Depression, uh, 58% is the true unemployment, 103 million working age Americans out of jobs, why would, would that administration, which we've already been in so many wars we can't even count them, move us towards a war with uh, a, a nuclear power with more, more bombs than we have? It makes yeah. no sense. Well, if you understand the spiritual dimensions of it, yes, it, it makes sense, but only in a demonic way. And let's look at some news if I if I yeah, can, yeah. because yeah, I want to, I want to uh, touch this top story because it, when it, it, when it hits you, you kind of you're a little confused at first. It says Ukraine pro-Russian separatists divide Putin as the Ukraine coup junta sends fifteen thousand troops to the border. Yeah, What's well, you there? know, you, you've got, uh, the, there are two ways to to interpret that. One, uh, the, the people are speaking regardless of, of what Putin says. They don't want to be part of this fascist uh, uh, government, uh, this kook uh, junta in Kiev. Kiev. And, they, you know, I mean, literally there was the Odessa massacre where they literally massacred, shot, burned up, uh, unarmed women and children and, and uh men. Uh, there was a picture on Veterans Today a few days ago of a very pregnant, I'd say at least eight months pregnant lady that uh, was was slaughtered along with the rest of these people. I mean, what kind of animal does that? These people are fascists. They give the Nazis salute. And in many cases, their fathers or grandfathers fought in the uh, Weimar uh, divisions that were farmed for people in the western Ukraine. And there's, you know, I, I, I don't care what religion or, or uh, what your philosophy is, liberal, conservative, what are the, there's no excuse for accepting Nazism. You know, that's just not acceptable. Okay, well, anyway, so one is, is these people are saying, we can't handle this. The other is, maybe this was by Putin's design, because he was, uh, he was, he was showing himself to be making every effort. Now, Having said that, I really don't think the man wants to go to war. He does, you know, he's had ample opportunities. Well, well I, I think that he, I think, here's what I think. I think uh, that Putin is making a strategic error. Uh, the first thing is I think that, number one, the uh, support in Europe has fallen apart. And we know that the that uh, Angela Merkel from Germany basically is in a rock and a hard place because she's actually now publicly supporting Nazis in the, uh, in the Kiev government, the coup government. Uh, number two... I think the people in the Donetsk People's Republic that you mentioned already, they have a referendum on May 11th, and what, what Putin did for political cover was to tell them to delay or postpone the referendum. People are dying. What the Russians should be doing is moving in their special forces and at least neutralizing the ability of these terrorists, basically, the Kiev uh, coup government, from crushing and killing Russian uh, people well, inside Ukraine. Well, you're right, but they are moving some Cossacks in, and I'll tell you what. Those well, well, they move even faster. I, my advice to Mr. Putin is swiftly move to neutralize their ability to prosecute uh, a mass murder of Russians, because we don't need a body count to justify a real wave of Russians coming in. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, they need to stop the idea, the West thinks it needs to stop the idea that they're going to post next month in a NATO war game inside uh, Ukraine, which is a direct provocation to Russia, saying don't let these republics on their own, yeah, by the way. I Putin think, I think yeah, the, the clock is ticking, and right. uh, many of those troops could stay yeah, yeah, there. But, but by next month, if they do happen. this, by the next month, here, and I think that Putin has a window now to do it before those those uh, NATO troops arrive. Well, before uh, they... you're right, uh, but there, there's a couple dates coming up. You just mentioned the one, the election. Right. Uh, also, tomorrow is a very big military parade in Moscow. Uh, you know, and, and uh, there are a couple things on the calendar that he may be delaying for. Uh, when he delays, the the, the fascists uh, show themselves in their true colors, and yes, people die, but but, but he's trying. You know, it, it partially is a war for the support of the human race, and they're right. trying to demonize Putin, and uh, Russia really is the victim in all this. I, I think I think they need to stop being trying to be socially, as they say, socially acceptable. I think Russia should just swiftly move to stop the ability to prosecute a, uh, from the West, from the Western Ukraine.
appropriate uh, bumper music for what we're talking about. Um, uh, Tim, I, I think that we're seeing the jockeying behind the scenes and in front of the scenes of uh, the great powers determining who's going to carve up the table of the power and the territory of the world. And I think Russia basically is certainly not happy with what's going on, neither is China. Uh, basically, yeah, they're, they're they're, do, they're, uh, Russia has, has committed two, and I put parentheses around this word, sins. Uh, one, it is uh, a probably the leading member of the BRICS, the uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, China, India, South Africa, and various other related hanger-on countries that are not fully in and do not want to be fully in the Rothschild-headed uh, global banking cartel-ruled uh, world. They want control. And uh, if they have uh, of their own countries, and if they they embrace what the uh, the global banking cartel wants, then the people at the top in these countries will no longer have their the level of power within their own countries. They do now. Okay, that's the first sin. The second sin is Russia, and to a much lesser extent China, uh, stood up uh, and opposed a uh, NATO Western Israeli attack on Iran, and. They did the same thing with a, a direct inter, uh, invasion of Syria. Now, of course, right. they got around that in a sense by sending the, the mercenaries into Syria, but uh, American troops uh, and so forth have not invaded Syria. And that's a sin against the, the, the Zionists. So the global banking cartel folks and the Netanyahu, the, the nutty Netanyahu uh, Zionists, want Putin's scalp. And they basically want to break up Russia. And the global banking cartel always hated Russia because the czar, uh, or various czars, going back especially to Alexander II, who sent his fleets off to protect uh, the American uh, North in the Civil War, uh, the, the Russia had never fit into their system until the communists took it over. And, uh, of course, they managed to kill 80 to 100 million people during their reign. Uh, so the, the, the concept of running your own country is alien to what the global banking cartel is doing, and it's alien to what the Zionists want. They want everybody to fall in step. And these people are so demonic and so evil, they're willing to take us even into the Third World War. Remember, they want to eliminate most people. They consider us unnecessary eaters. And uh, there's over 7 billion people in this world, and they'd like to eliminate six, uh, maybe 6.6 .6 or so billion people, so there's about a half billion, and most of those will be, in effect, slaves in a, in a high-tech police state. And you can see the development of that police state uh, right here in America uh, increasingly. Now, Putin has, has been twisting and turning every way he can to avoid the war trap. And because it's not whether Russia can invade and take over the Ukraine. I figure uh, in half a week, uh, the Russians will have all of the Ukraine, with or without the help of the Belarusians. That's not the issue. The issue is what comes after that. And that's what Putin knows. Uh, right. But by the way, today, uh, Russia is engaging in a massive... Uh, nuclear strike uh, uh, response exercise. Yeah. They have fired two long-range ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, as part of a test. And th this is a message to these nutty globalists and Zionists. Uh, you know, if you push us too far, uh, we're prepared to fight back. Uh, just like, you know, you corner anybody, uh, whether it's a rat or whether it's a human being, uh, people will often say, and, and, and it's and animals, well, well, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to take you with me. Well, right. that's what m MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction, is all about. The concept of MAD has, in a, in a weird kind of way, kept us alive. It's kept me alive all my life. But, and I'm 63, but you now have people that, uh, it, it is probably not just an act, who are really insane enough uh, to say, yes, we've got underground cities, we're prepared to go underground, we want to wipe out most of these unnecessary eaters anyway. Uh, if we don't get what we want, we'll just take it all the way to WW3. Right. Yeah, and, and, let, and let me summarize. Scary thing. And, Tim, and, let me summarize and then get your comment before we close today. 
uh, what I see, Putin's going to move, I think, before the end of May. He's going to be forced, because even in domestically, if he doesn't move to protect Russian citizens, yeah, they're going to have NATO troops next month. Second thing, I think that America and Europe are going to do nothing when Russia does what it has to do. And to be honest with you, what it wants to do is simply allow the Ukrainians and other people like the Moldovians to just simply say, hey, we want to be republics independent of each other in the so-called collective called Ukraine. And if we want to ally ourselves with Russia, leave us alone. So the DPR, the Democratic Republic, uh, that they're, they're discussing, that the Kiev coup government wants to crush militarily. The people said they're even going to come up with, with, with shovels if they don't have guns. So the fact is that Putin's really only a secondary factor in this. And he doesn't have control of it. But politically, if he doesn't do something, he's going to have domestic problems. Yeah, I, where the people I, I agree. Are, he will look like a weakling. He'll, he'll, he'll look like a weakling. Problem. And what will happen is the people in Russia will basically boot him out because the military in Russia are strongly now pro-Russian. And so has Putin been in the past. So I think what you're going to see is Putin is going to make a swift... He wanted to get some political space here so that it would make any attempt to kind of whitewash him as a terrorist or uh, as an invader. I, I, had, uh, I know a number of Russians. I've been to Russia. I had this beautiful yeah. blonde Russian girlfriend for a while after my wife died. And I have to tell you, Russians are more patriotic than almost any... Uh, Americans are maybe a second, uh, but uh, Russians are insanely patriotic. And it's, it's in their blood uh, and yes and what you just said about the Russian generals is very true but right, so he only way, has so much maneuver room he, he's got and and I he, by the way he, I think he will he, he, can I his say window two, is about, two other things before we run out of time yeah, I, really so those want principles, to I want to get your response to because I think he's got about six weeks and if he doesn't respond he's toast yeah you I agree and it may be less than six weeks but yeah yeah uh, the Pentagon has inked a $1.2 billion White House helicopter deal. Now, yeah. this is at a time of global economic depression with 58% true unemployment rate in America, 103 million Americans uh, unemployed. Uh, cut back in food stamps for the hungry. Obama and his successors will get a fleet of super luxury helicopters uh, for $1.2 billion. That's that's so far beyond insane and sickening, and it's so it, it, it's uh, it's symptomatic of just how totally corrupt and dysfunctional America has become. Uh, because there's no public outrage, uh, the media is is not hardly covering the story at all, and there's no congressional action. Uh, it, it's just amazing. Okay, that's one answer. I had to say that because it just it just uh, really gets in my crawl. Secondly. Uh, and we've talked about this before. There have been four more deaths now in Saudi Arabia from MERS, uh, Middle East Respiratory Symptom. Right. I believe that MERS was created uh, oh, yeah. as a, a bioengineered disease, as there are several others, including uh, a, a Ebola, hemorrhagic fever. Uh, I think what you have said many times is totally correct, that, that we will see uh, a, a major pandemic. It, it may actually be more than one, more than one disease. We can hit with uh, multiple, and, it, and it's going to start medical martial law. They'll do a bank holiday that's, that's and they'll take away a lot of our... Chip in us. Right, that's when they want to start forced vaccinations and change the internet policy, so you have to have biometric authentication to log on. It's that's all where coming. we're going. Yeah. 